Hey everyone, Tio here. Today I'm reviewing the Chrome ZK3. This is a mechanical keyboard with 82 keys and a 13 inch ultra wide touch screen display that can improve your productivity instantly. And there is one NVMe enclosure behind. So when you use this as a secondary display, you can use it to display smaller windows. There is enough space for three windows. And for me, I usually use the file browser Gmail, Outlook, YouTube Music Player, or Instant Messaging app on this secondary display. Oh, by the way, disclaimer, this is a review unit provided by the company. In this video, I'll just present to you my findings so that you can decide whether this is worth the money. And the price for this keyboard is US $389. Let me give you the bottom line up front. I have reviewed the Quam ZK1 keyboard before and this is a significant upgrade over the previous model because now you can actually tilt the display so that you can look at the display from the front. So this is a huge upgrade and it's using a mechanical keyboard. The typing experience is excellent. Dual display setup is always useful so this will definitely improve your productivity instantly. Having a top-down display set up like this is great because you can see everything without having to tilt your head or look left and right as compared to having a dual display set up that is by the side. So this is definitely more ergonomic and this setup also saves you table space because this is a two-in-one design. You have a display and a keyboard compared to having another big display by the side. Downsides, this keyboard can work with Mac OS. However, the touch screen support from Mac OS is very primitive. The touch screen support from Windows is much better and there are quite a number of useful features, which I will show you later on. Second downside, the stereo speakers are loud enough, but they sound slightly hollow. Third downside, the NVMe SSD enclosure wasn't designed with heat dissipation in mind because all these parts are plastic and I wasn't able to fit my NVMe SSD here because this slot here is too small. I think there is some manufacturing issue with that interface or at least with this particular review unit that I have. And now let's move on to the full review. Let's have a look at all the items included with the purchase of the keyboard. Let's unbox this and take a look at the items that are included. So this box is kind of big. It's bigger than some laptop boxes. This is a solid box. We have some foam. This looks really nice. Let me take out everything first. There's a USB type A power adapter, a 3 to 1 cable with HDMI connector for use with computers that output video through HDMI. User guide, disassembly tool for the keyboard, rubber stoppers for the NVMe SSD, USB-C to USB-C cable, USB-A to USB-C cable, key cap and switch puller. It's essential to go through the user guide because this keyboard requires a setup for all the features to work. And it says here that this keyboard requires at least 10 watts of power. This user guide will teach you how to disassemble the keyboard if you need to do so, set up the audio, extend the display, and enable the touch features. On this page are very useful function key shortcuts you should remember because the shortcuts are not labeled on the keycaps. First impression, this keyboard is big. This keyboard is bigger than this 14 inch MacBook Pro that I have here. This is around 2.1 kg, so it's really heavy for a keyboard. And the build quality is extremely solid. This is a padded display cover to protect the display and it slides right off. This looks like PU leather to me. The texture looks good, it feels good, the stitching looks good. On the back, there is this elastic band and this is some fabric texture. This is a hard surface. It says here on this protective film that you should not squeeze the display, do not pierce the display. And here, that's the button you should press before you push the display down. Do not push the display down without using the release button. 
So this release button will lock the display at two angles. This is the upright angle and this is the other angle. If you want to use other angles, you can do so. The hinge is, I would say, stiff enough, but other angles will not be locked. Let's remove the protective film. Wow, this is very glossy. See how glossy it is? This is thicker than laptop displays, but it's still quite thin. These two holes are for the speakers, and there are two more holes on the other side for stereo audio. Let's have a look at the back. So this is matte textured with some pattern, and that's the SSD enclosure. This is made with plastic, so I'm not sure how effective heat dissipation will be. From what I can see, this SSD interface supports M key and B plus M key. However, I wasn't able to fit my SSD into the slot because this part here is slightly longer compared to the space that's provided. So the manufacturing could be imperfect or I'm just using the wrong SSD, but I don't think so. Most of the keyboard is made with plastic except for this back plate here, which is metal and it's matte textured. There are two small rubber feet here and one big piece here and these two are foldable feet. The downside is there is no rubber at the end of the feet and there's no rubber here as well. So you will have to rely on the two rubber feet in front for grip. Let's look at the pots behind. Now these pots are actually recessed beneath this layer. So the SD card and micro SD card slots are difficult to reach. I definitely will not be using the card reader. The company should have placed the SD card reader by the side of the keyboard. That's the USB-C port that connects to the computer. And this is the USB-C port that connects to power. There are two USB type A ports with USB 3 transfer speeds. And this is the OSD button and toggle. Let's connect this keyboard to my computer using the USB-C to USB-C cable. There's even a little sticker here that tells you to use the L-shaped connector to connect to this keyboard. By the way, there are two cable holders here. So if I connect this cable to this port here, it's going to block the SD and micro SD card slots, which I'm not going to use anyway, so it doesn't really matter. If I connect it the other way, it's going to block the USB power port. So it's not possible for me to put this cable into this holder. So I have to turn it like this so that the cable goes out this way. Now, if the cable is too short for you, then you don't have to do it this way. Next, I will connect the USB-C here and this USB-A to the power adapter. So I've just connected the keyboard to this laptop and this is not an ideal setup because this keyboard is meant to be used below a display. It's not meant to be used in this side-by-side -side setup. Even if I place the laptop on a stand, which I'm going to do so right now, and move the keyboard in front here it's still not ideal because you can see there's this huge gap between this display and this display this i would say is the typical setup for use with the keyboard there is the main display and this is the secondary display and you can connect this to your computer to your desktop or to your laptop so right now I have this laptop connected to the keyboard using USB-C to USB-C video connection and you can get video and the touch screen also works. If you have to use this keyboard with HDMI connection to your computer, you have to use the 3 to 1 cable that's provided. So for that cable, USB-C will connect to the keyboard. HDMI will connect to the computer. There is one USB-A that you have to connect to the computer so that the touch screen can work. And the other USB-A you have to connect to power so that you can power the display. But if you use USB-C to USB-C video connection, you can get video, data, and power. So um, having one single cable connection is just better.
let's see what you can do with the driver so this is where you can customize the function key shortcuts if you don't want to use the default ones that were pre-programmed so just select the function key and you can choose between inputting your keyboard shortcut have a macro assigned to the function key uh, have media controls or use your function key for mouse actions under lighting this is where you can choose between the different lighting effects and also control the speed and the brightness of those lighting effects under macro this is where you can create your own sets of macros and that's pretty much it for the functionality customization of the keyboard this top-down setup is fantastic because you can see everything without having to tilt your head up and down and this setup is better compared to the side-by-side -side setup because with side-by-side -side, you have to turn your head now side-by-side -side setup is good if you have a huge display by the side but for top-down setup it's good to have one main display and a smaller secondary display so how I usually use this setup is I will place two windows here so I can move this window down here and use the keyboard shortcut window key left arrow to position it to the left side and I can have another window here or I can play some music here let me just move the YouTube music player down here so that I can fit it to this area here or if you are playing games here you can put the game guide here so this is the game guide walkthrough and you can place it here or you can fill the screen using the keyboard shortcut and play your game here and read stuff here or listen to music while you are working here so this setup is very versatile this keyboard definitely needs a main display because a dual side-by-side -side display setup is not going to work and make sure the main display that you have has enough space below for the keyboard display this secondary display will boost your productivity instantly so for my type of work which involves graphic design and video editing I will usually do my work here have the YouTube music player here and my email Gmail or Outlook here or I can have Gmail and Outlook here side by side so whenever there are emails that come in I can see the email straight away I will not be able to miss any emails so that's usually how I work with a dual display setup to get the touch screen display to work with windows you have to go to control panel do a search for touch and under tablet pc settings select setup select touch input that will open the setup screen so this is not the touch screen i'm going to press enter this is the touch screen so i'm going to touch it and press enter this is not the touch screen so i'm going to press enter and that's it and now the touch screen works so now you can drag your windows around if you move the window to the top here you can see all these layouts and you can place the window into the specific position so for this extra white display you can go with a side by side uh, window placement or have three windows side by side like this let me just tap this and move this into position this will go to the center and this will go to the right side so it's very easy to place the windows into position and now I can have my music player here email and instant messaging app here the touch screen can be used to call up the OSD manual just swipe down from the middle to the bottom and you can adjust the settings using your fingers so this is very convenient there isn't much you can adjust though you can change the brightness the volume color temperature from RGB to warm cool sRGB display rotation that's pretty much it this keyboard can be used with Mac OS to switch the keyboard layout from Windows to Mac you press the keyboard shortcut function V I had some issues with Mac OS though I wasn't able to output the sound to the speaker on the keyboard because when I choose the K3 speaker it wasn't able to switch to the K3 
speakers. And also the touch support for Mac OS is very primitive. The tactile typing experience on this mechanical keyboard is quite satisfying. The sound is dampened, so this is not that noisy. The keyboard has beautiful backlight effects and you can choose from different effects. There are more than 20 lighting effects to choose from and you can choose them from the driver or use the function key shortcuts to switch between different lighting effects. All right, to conclude, the Quam ZK3 keyboard is a productivity tool. This display is not a gimmick. This display is actually very useful. Those people who are using the ASUS ZenBook Pro Dual laptops, the one with two displays, you guys will know what I'm talking about. So this is definitely going to instantly improve your productivity. As to whether it's worth $389, well, you can decide. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this keyboard. And if you are interested to buy this, you can check out the purchase links that I have for you in the video description. Thanks for watching. See you guys again. Bye.